We're at the International Conference in Vienna with Anthony Fauci, who has uh, been so kind as to give us a short time here to tell us about your take on some of the amazing events at the conference, to this conference. Thank this you. is a wonderful Thank opportunity. You. Uh, and the presentation you gave this morning, if you can just touch First on that. First of all, what I spoke about during my session was the very early events in HIV infection when the, when the body, the mucosal surface is, be it of the penis or the vagina or the rectum, uh, are first exposed to HIV and the events that take place within minutes to hours of the virus getting through the mucosa and finding the vulnerable cells and at what particular point you can intervene and what is the window of vulnerability of the virus and how we use that as a window of opportunity to intervene with condoms, with circumcision, with microbicides, with uh, vaccines, with pre-exposure prophylaxis and I went through the mechanisms whereby those things work. I also introduced the work that we had recently done on a brand new discovered, that we discovered, receptor for HIV on the CD4 positive T cell that's called alpha 4 beta 7, which is a normal cellular molecule. It isn't necessary for infection with HIV, but it is an important molecule that defines a population of CD4 positive T cells that are enriched at the mucosal surface that are highly susceptible to HIV. And I propose that the interaction between that molecule and the HIV envelope should be the target of vaccine development, which we hope to start doing. So you asked specifically about the issue of how does circumcision fit in there? Well, in circumcision, when you have the foreskin of the penis, the, penis, the outside is keratinized like skin, very difficult for virus to get through, whereas the inner surface is actually mucosal surface, which is very susceptible to the virus permeating it and getting to infect the individual. When you remove the foreskin in circumcision, after a while, that part that was really mucosa actually becomes keratinized in the sense that it becomes like normal skin. So you protect a large part of the shaft of the, of the, of the, of the penis that would otherwise have been just like mucosal right. surface. Right. This is an amazing uh, finding that you've come up with, and I, I know that so many things have happened at the conference, and I, I'd like, since you just, just now left the, uh, the Capricia presentation, uh, I know that you made small remarks there, and I'd really like to have you reiterate some of okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that the, the Caprisa study, which tested a 1% tenofovir gel compared to placebo in South African women as a topical microbicide, was a very important study. It was a significant demonstration, and the, st the statistics are unassailable, that in fact this 1% tenofovir gel microbicide is effective in protecting a certain percentage of women. The reason that's important, it is the first time after many years of disappointing failures of microbicides that either did not work or actually made people more susceptible to infection because of the irritation of the vaginal mucosa, this particular product showed a significant degree of protection. That's the very good news and exciting proof of concept. The goal and the work ahead is to improve on that number, to repeat the study, to do various permutations of it. Uh, it was given before and after intercourse. There's another ongoing study that's looking at the same product given every single day and comparing it to oral products. So there's a lot of work to be done to optimize this, but in and of itself, this was a very important, significant advance. In one of the questions immediately uh, following your, the presentations uh, in the conference was a suggestion that maybe there are other uh, antivirals that could be implemented in much the same way and the concern about the cross resistance and also uh, the possibility of using the antivirals, it might confound the use of it as an antiviral. Well, not necessarily. That question was raised, but the yeah. important data that uh, uh, Salim Karim showed today was that in the individuals who got the tenofovir gel, when they did, if, you know, some of them did get infected, when they did, they did not get infected with a tenofovir resistance strain, nor was there any indication that there was tenofovir resistance in any of the individuals involved. So it looks like the way this is being used, it's not going to be a problem with cross resistance to using the same drug orally. Where, where do you think the research might go from here? Do you have any ideas? Oh, I do have a very good idea. I know exactly where it's going to go. We're going to do other trials to try and confirm it and extend those data. I mean, as far as other, other possible microbicides. Well, for example, there's an ongoing trial now called the VOICE study, right. which is a placebo 
versus 1% tenofovir gel versus oral tenofovir versus awful oral truvada. Mm -hmm. There are other studies going on that are using vaginal rings and mm -hmm. slow release of various antivirals. So there's a lot of work going on. And the cure? Where well, we you know, the cure is going to be still years away, but it's becoming more and more feasible as we learn more and more. We mm -hmm. put a major effort. I made that one of my top priorities mm -hmm. for NIAID. Mm -hmm. And I think that at least a functional cure will be possible in some individuals. Certainly not everybody, but in right. some individuals. And the last thing, treatment is prevention. Well, treatment and prevention is important. It's very exciting to hear all about it at this meeting. The more we learn about treating people early, the more we see the beneficial effects on cohorts of populations. Thank you so much. You're I welcome. appreciate it.